Lately I've been coming up with a lot of fantasy road trips. So far I have four different routes planned out, and I've tried to include as many friends and family members and parts of the country as possible. I think that spending time with friends in their natural habitats is really grounding for me. It's really fun and interesting to see how someone I care about lives day to day, and it also helps me get outside of my own head. And I've had lots of circumstances lately that have really made me want to break from my own head. The death of a teacher I loved, not getting a job I really wanted, missing my friends, and coronavirus isn't helping anything. Don't get me wrong, I have a wonderful supportive network of friends, and my parents are doing everything they can to take care of me. But I'm away from a lot of people that I really miss. I'm living at home right now, and there's just a lot of time for me to be alone with my thoughts. Hence the fantasy road trips. Thinking about getting away and finding peace reminds me of a poem I read in one of my college English classes, The Lake Isle of Innisfree by William Butler Yeats. There's actually a recording of Yeats reading this poem. Here's the first stanza. I will arise and go now and go to Innisfree and a small cabin build there of clay and what was made. Nine bean rows will I have there a hive for the honey bee, and live alone in the bee lound glade. So when my dad asked if I wanted to go with him to open up our cottage in Michigan this weekend, properly social distancing from our neighbors, of course, I took the opportunity to arise and go. I wouldn't get to see any of the friends I missed, but it was a chance to spend a few days somewhere far away, to be by a lake, to get out on the water on my kayak. So... I went. Getting out of the car at our cottage in Michigan, I felt like what I imagine you might feel in a sensory deprivation chamber. Everything was so quiet, so still. After about five seconds, I heard a single, solitary bird chirping. What place could be more peaceful than this? But as I walked down to the lake and stood on our dock, I found myself thinking about the same sorts of things that were making me anxious before I left for Michigan. This lake, Lake Leelanau, is a dammed lake. Not because it's sinful or anything, it's just that there's a dam that separates the lake from Lake Michigan. Without the dam, there would still be water here, but it would be creeks and streams, nothing this wide or this deep. In other words, Lake Leelanau is here because we wanted it to be here. It's a man-made lake, meant to address man-made concerns. Even these mighty waves crashing on shore are because of the motorboat that just went by. And that makes me think about a walk in the woods I took a long time ago with my brother and our friends Nathan and Molly and our moms. It was many, many years ago. I was maybe nine or ten. We came upon a pond, and for some reason, all the kids decided to try to make a ripple that would make it all the way across. So for the next 30 minutes or so, we stood in front of the pond and we threw everything we could into the water, pebbles, sticks, acorns, to try to get that ripple to make it all the way across. I don't want to go back to being a kid again, but I do miss that feeling that nature was just nature, a place to explore or an outlet for my imagination games. I remember seeing the moon on nighttime car rides and wondering how it could follow me. I was a teenager before I could see it had a face. Nowadays, the moon, the woods, the lake, all feel like backdrops to my very human, very real world concerns. I'm going back to school in the fall to get a master's degree. I'm hoping that as things go back to normal, as I start school again and move back to Chicago and see friends in real life again, I'll have more to distract me from the things I'm anxious about. But my weekend at the lake made me worry that just because I'm distracting myself from my anxiety won't make it go away. Or even if it did, I'd find more things to be anxious about, things that would come back to haunt me the next time the world gives me too much time to think. The thing that most inspires me about that poem, The Lake Isle of Innisfree, is that Yeats didn't write the poem on vacation in front of a lake. He wrote it in the middle of a cramped, crowded city, London. He was walking down the street one day and saw a little fountain in a store window, part of an ad for a new kind of drink. But apparently, he looked into the tiny trickle of that little fountain in the middle of London and thought, I shall arise and go now. 
Yeats actually leaves us a clue at the end of the third and final stanza of the poem that the Lake Isle might not be literally real. I will arise and go now, for always night and day, I hear lake water lapping with low sounds of the shore, while I stand on the roadway, or on the pavement's gray, I hear it in the deep heart core. I haven't heard much recently from my Deep Hearts core, and I don't even know where I might find it. One of my deepest worries is kind of a meta one, that I'm anxiety all the way down. But this poem gives me hope that the Deep Hearts core is in there somewhere, and that I might find something peaceful in it. <laughs> 